In the next few videos, we'll review factoring. Let's start out with writing these polynomials as a product of greatest common factor times another factor so that when you multiply it out, it gives you the answer that we got here, 4a squared plus 12a, negative 3a cubed b plus 12a squared b. So go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Assuming you have come back, let's take a look. We know that our greatest common factor of 4a squared and 12a is going to be 4a. And we've done many problems like these before. So you can see here, 2 squared, 2 squared is common. a squared, a will give you a common. So we need to rewrite this now as 4a times a plus 3, because 4a times a will give me 4a squared. 4a times positive 3 will give me positive 12a. So you can always check to make sure that your factors are correct. So you should never get factoring problems incorrect, because you can always check them. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Between the negative 3a cubed b, 12a squared b, we can pull a negative 3a squared b or just a 3a squared b. So if you look, we can rewrite this. The first time, it might help you to rewrite it so that you can see how the greatest common factor appears in each of the terms. And so here you can see there's a 3a squared and a b, 2 squared times 3a squared b. So 3a squared b we can pull out, and then there'll be a negative from the first term and an a left over. There will be a 2 squared or a 4 left over. We could also have chosen to pull out a negative 3a squared b. We'll do that in just a second. But remember, you always check. 3a squared b times negative a will give you negative 3a cubed b. 3a squared b times 4 will give you a positive 12a squared b. So it checks out. Always make sure you check your answer. So or like I said, we could pull out a negative 3a squared b. But then the positive 12 would have to be written as negative times negative makes it positive. And so then our answer will be negative 3a squared b times a minus 4. And you can see why that is. Negative 3a squared b times a will give you negative 3a cubed b. Negative 3 times negative 4 will give you positive 12a squared b. So either answer is acceptable. All right, pause the video and see what you can do. Assuming you have come back, let's take a look. We have the greatest common factor of 24 and a to the 6, b to the 3rd and 15, a to the second, b to the fifth. So between the two, they share a 3, they share an a squared, and they share a b cubed. And so that would be our greatest common factor. And so if you pull that out, you have to now figure out what you're going to multiply by. So in this case, it will be 8a to the 4, because 3 times 8 is 24. A squared times a to the 4 will give you a to the 6, and b to the 3rd will be b to the 3rd. For the second term, 3 times negative 5 is going to be negative 15. a squared will be a squared. b to the 3rd times b to the 2nd will give you b to the 5th. Do remember to check your answers, multiply it out to make sure you factored it correctly. All right, greatest common factor for the 4x times x plus y minus 5y times x plus y is going to be x plus y. So this will become x plus y times 4x minus 5y. You also saw problems like number 4 when we were adding and subtracting like units. In this case, the unit is going to be x plus y. So it'll be 4x minus 5y copies of x plus y. That's another way we saw that. All right, go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do. At first glance in the problem number 5, 
It may not look like there is a greatest common factor or any like units. However, you may have to rewrite a little bit. So let's take a look. We have x times x minus y, which we can also write as negative x times y minus x. Because x minus y is the same as negative y plus x, and negative 1 times y minus x is the same as negative y plus x. Why is that? Because, look, negative 1 times y is negative y. Negative 1 times negative x is a positive x. So x minus y is equivalent to negative 1 times y minus x. And so if we have x times x minus y, we can rewrite that as negative x times y minus x. And the x minus y, that's the negative y minus x. So we can come over here then and rewrite it. We can rewrite our polynomial as negative x times y minus x plus y squared times y minus x. Now we have our greatest common factor of y minus x. And our final answer would be negative x plus y squared. And again, check your answer to make sure you have the right answer. All right, in this next problem, again, we have to find the greatest common factor. And so we are going to have 2x minus 3 to the fourth power, 2x minus 3 to the third power. So that means we're going to have 2x minus 3 to the third power as our greatest common factor. But if you look now in the first term where you have 2x minus 3 to the fourth power times 5x plus 7, we are going to be left with 1 2x minus 3 since we only factored out 2x minus 3 to the third power. So there's a 2x minus 3 left over. There's also a 5x plus 7 left over. In the second quantity, the product, we have 2x minus 3 cubed, which we already factored out. So that means you're only left with 3x minus 1. OK, so now our final answer, look, we have 2x minus 3 to the third power. But here, we're going to have to multiply this out. So you're going to have 2x times 5x, which will give you 10x squared. 2x times 7 will give you 14x. Negative 3 times 5x will give you negative 15x. Negative 3 times positive 7 will give you negative 21. And then a plus 3x minus 1. So now we can combine like units. So we have 10x squared, 14x minus 15x, which is a negative x, plus 3x will give you 2x. And negative 21 minus 1 will give you negative 22. So that's our final answer. All right, pause the video again and see what you can do. So greatest common factor in this case is a minus b. And so you'll have a minus b times 2a plus 3b. You can also remember how we did adding like units. You have 2a copies of a minus b plus 3b copies of a minus b. So you'll end up with 2a plus 3b copies of a minus b, which would be the same uh, equivalent form of the same answer. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Pause the video, see what you can do. All right, you have. 3, 6, and 12. So 3 is greatest common factor of those. a squared, a, and a. So we're going to have a, b, and b, and b squared. So it'll be b. So 3ab is our greatest common factor. And then we have to figure out 3ab times what? We'll give you 3a squared b. And that will be what? Good, an a. 3ab times what? We'll give you a negative 6a b. Good, that would be a negative 2. And 3ab times what? We'll give you 12ab squared. So that would be 4b. So that's how you can make sure that when you distribute 3ab across the addition and subtraction, you get exactly what you started with. 
That's how you can check your answers. Let's just review how we were adding using greatest common factor or adding like terms. So for example, here, when we were adding like terms, we said there are 3x plus 1s and ax plus 1, so you're going to get 3 plus ax plus 1s. Another way to think of it would be x plus 1 is the greatest common factor, so we pull it out, and then we have times 3 plus a. Same thing here. 2x plus 1 is the common factor, so it will be 3 minus square root 2, 2x plus 1s, since you're adding like terms, or you can think of it as factoring out the greatest common factor. All right, try this next one on your own. Pause the video and try. Okay, so 2x over 3 minus 1 is the greatest common factor, and you're left with 4x plus 5, or just thinking of it as adding like terms would work also. All right, how about this? Good. 5 square root 2 plus 6 square root x plus 1s. How about that? Did you get that? All right, so we're going to revisit these problems, but in another way. We're going to ask you to imagine them as areas of rectangles. So for right now, when we're working with these problems, assume that all variables are big enough and positive so that we can actually draw these rectangles of this shape. So 3x plus 3. There are two things added together, 3 times x. So you can think of how that can represent area of a rectangle with the width of the rectangle being 3 and the length of the rectangle being x. And so the area of this rectangle here is 3 times x. You can think of 3 as 3 times 1. And so 3 times 1 would be this little uh, rectangle that you see here with the length to be 1 and the width to be 3. So we have 3 times x is this part, and 3 times 1 is that part. All right, so let's look at another term. If I said plus ax plus a, then that means I'm adding more rectangles here with width of a and length of x, width of a and length of 1. So this is area a times x, and this is area a times 1. So now we have all these four pieces together making a rectangle. We're going to show you how we can rearrange it. So 3 is the same as 3 times 1, and a is the same as a times 1. That allows us to make these rectangles of area 3 and of area a. All right, so now we have a division here which separates this rectangle from this rectangle. What if I take this division out? Then I have one big rectangle where the width is 3 and the length is now x plus 1. From here to here, it's x, and from here to here, it's 1. So x plus 1. So let's move that to the side so we can actually see it. These two pieces added together is this new rectangle, which is 3 times x plus 1. Let's do the same here. So we have the same thing happening here where we have a times x plus 1. So these two pieces added together is giving you this new rectangle. So now we have, instead of four rectangles, two rectangles uh, combined together. Maybe we can try to get rid of this division and make one big rectangle, and that will then give you what? From here to here was 3, from here to here was a. So this is all 3 plus a width, and this is x and 1, so x plus 1. So the area of this big rectangle is 3 plus a times x plus 1. So what we're really doing is adding all these terms so that we have one big rectangle and not four separate rectangles. So putting them together like this is really the process of factor by grouping. But it is also the same as when we were adding like terms or factoring out the greatest common factor. You can see how all those algebraic principles can also be looked upon as geometry. So geometry is not this separate entity, but it can actually aid in understanding of algebraic concepts. So look very carefully, because eventually you're going to have to draw rectangles like that. So 3x plus 3, that's two of these. ax plus a is two of those. Then we took away this division, which made it 3 times x plus 1. 
We took away this division, which made that a times x plus 1. We took away this division in the next step, and that made it 3 plus a times x plus 1 as area of this rectangle. All right, let's cultivate on building our visualization skill. So here is a rectangle, and see if you can write an algebraic expression that would represent the area of this rectangle. So go ahead and try that on your own. Pause the video, see what you can do. All right, assuming you've done that, it will be x squared. So the green area here is x times x or x squared. The red area vertically here, this is 1, 2, 3 times x, so 3x's. Here's 1, 2, 2x's. And the 1 by 1, there are 6 of them, so that will be a 6. So it will be x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. What about this next one? Pause the video, see what you can do. It's the same picture, except we have horizontally combined the green and the vertical reds and then the horizontal reds and the yellows together. So see if you can figure out how to write that. It will be x times x plus 3, which is this upper part of the rectangle right here, and then the part below, which will be the purple part, 2 times x plus 3. All right, try this on your own. Same picture, except now we're combining the two. So we're taking away divisions one by one. So this will become x plus 2 times x plus 3. You can also see what is happening here, x squared plus 3x. x is the greatest common factor, so the x times the remaining part, which is x plus 3. 2x and 6, the greatest common factor is 2, and then x plus 3. Now, between the two, remember we added, so common factor is x plus 3, and then you're left with x plus 2. Or you can think of it as adding like terms, so x plus 3 is our unit, and you're doing x plus 2 copies of x plus 3. So all the different terminologies, least common multiple, greatest common factor, don't forget them. We're still going to use them. Here we used the greatest common factor in such a way that at the end, we created a rectangle and we could find, uh, so we created one rectangle instead of several rectangles together. So, and we are associating the concept of greatest common factor to be able to do that, which is quite a genius way to look at algebra, looking at rectangles. All right, let's try another example. Go ahead, try on your own. And again, we will keep going like that and three stages and use greatest common factor and looking at pictures. So we have x squared, x squared, four, four of them, so that will be 4x squared. Here we have, this is 3 times 2, so 6x's plus 4x's and plus 6. So let's write that. Do you see where each of the pieces are coming from? Four green ones at 4x squared, 6x and 4x, so those are the red pieces, and then six uh, little ones without the yellow pieces, one by one squares. All right, so now we're doing horizontal combinations, so that will become between 4x squared and 6x. We have a 2x is the greatest common factor, so times 2x plus 3, because that will give you 4x squared plus 6x. And then 2 times 2x plus 3. Those are the these two rectangular areas. The next picture will have 2x plus 2 times 2x plus 3. All right, now that you know how to associate pictures with their algebraic equivalents, let's see if you can do this next one. It's very similar to the one we just did, except instead of 3, we have 3a, the length. And instead of 2, we have 2a is the length, which means that the little teeny squares, the yellow squares, are not going to be 6, but what? Think about that. It will be 6a squared, because each little area there is a squared, a squared, there's 6 of them. So again, 4x squared, that's the green part. We have vertically 6ax. 
plus the horizontal red, which is 4ax, and then 6a squared. Next part will become 2x times 2x plus 3a, because that's this upper part, upper rectangle. And then the bottom green rectangle will become 2a times 2x plus 3a. And then we'll combine it into one big rectangle. And that would be 2x plus 2a times 2x plus 3a. All right, so now we are giving you an algebraic expression in three stages and asking you if you could draw rectangles that will show us these three stages. So go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do. Truly cultivate this visual skills because it will pay dividends in the deeper understanding of this material that we are in. All right, so x squared plus bx plus 2x's plus 2b's. So x can be any length, b can be any length. So x by x is the x squared, b times x is this part, the purple part, uh, 1x, 2x, and then 2 times b. So that's a b times 1, b times 1, so that's the 2b. In the next one, we're combining the top two, so it will become x plus b, and then times x, and then the bottom two combined together, so that will be the 2 times x plus b. And then in the last one, one rectangle, x plus 2 times x plus b. This process is called factor by grouping. You can see we're grouping first two, last two. From the first two, we're pulling out greatest common factor. Second two, we're putting greatest common factor. And then amongst the first and the new second term, and the new first term, pulling out their greatest common factor, which is x plus b. So that's what we'll look at next. All right, let's continue talking about factor by grouping. So the first example is factor the following, 3x plus ay plus ax plus 3y. The first thing you will notice is that associative property of addition will allow us to add ay plus ax first before we do 3x plus 3y. And then the commutative property of ay plus ax will allow us to interchange them. So we can write ay plus ax as ax plus ay. So let's go ahead and do that and then use associative property, which allows us to add in any order we want. So the first thing we did was interchange ay and ax positions using the commutative and associative properties of addition. And now look at 3x plus ax. They have x as a greatest common factor, and ay plus 3y has y as a greatest common factor. Commutative property of addition will allow us to write 3 plus a as a plus 3. And so that's a plus 3 in the first term, x times a plus 3 plus y times a plus 3 will allow us to say the greatest common factor of those two terms is a plus 3. Or you can say add like terms, and you'll have x plus y copies of a plus 3. So it's very important that you, when you do factor by grouping, that you understand what justification is allowing you to do what step. And in addition to that, you can remember we said you should never get factoring problems wrong because you can check it. So x plus y times a plus 3. x times a is ax. x times 3 is 3x. a times y, y ay. And y times 3, 3y. And that's exactly what we have here. Uh, and commutative and associative property allows us to write it in any which way we want. So we can actually rearrange the terms and it will match the original problem. So very important that you match every single step with its justification. Remember your toolbox. Always have your toolbox handy with you with all the properties. All right, pause the video here. See what you can do on your own on the next one. All right, let's see. 
So the negative C D can be written as positive in parentheses negative C D and same thing with the negative B D. And that's because we know that associative and commutative property will allow us to add A B and A C and the negative C D and the negative B D together. We also know that the commutative and associative property will allow us to rewrite it because negative C D is same as C times negative D. Negative B D is B times negative D. And so that will allow us to rewrite our terms and then factor greatest common factor. First two terms have A as their greatest common factor. The next two terms have a negative D as their greatest common factor. And now in this step, the A times B plus C minus D times B plus C. B plus C is greatest common factor. Or you can also use that we are adding like terms. So A minus D copies of B plus C. All right, you do the next one on your own. And again, you justify it. Also, the previous problem, we did not check our answer. Please go back, check your answer. Then pause the video here, do problem number three, and justify. We will not give you the justification steps, but you do it. It's slightly different, but don't let that throw you off. Remember, we are training you to, no matter how the problem looks, just do it what you can. Go give it a try. All right, let's take a look. First two terms have greatest common factor of B. Next two terms have greatest common factor of A. Last two terms have a greatest common factor of C, but I'm going to pull out a negative C. All right, so then that allows us to rewrite the term as B times A plus 3D minus A times 3D plus A, because negative A times positive A will give me negative A squared, negative B, C. So I've pulled negative C out, so it'll be B. And negative C times negative A will give me positive AC. OK, now what? First term and next term. A plus 3D and 3D plus A. Commutative property of addition will give you A plus 3D as their greatest common factor. And you'll be left with B minus A. The last term, we haven't done anything with it, so it will stay as is. But now look, now we have B minus A greatest common factor. And so we can write A plus 3D minus C. Again, check your answer and justify every single step. 